Hello, I'm pretty sure most of us are well acquainted with this video. You know, the one where your boy completes a level of Sonic Forces with only one hand. It perfectly encapsulates the simplistic level design of this game. And that got me wondering, are all of the levels like this? Can these levels really be this pathetic? Could we basically do the same thing with the other levels? Those are questions that only I have probably ever asked and want the answer to. So, is it possible to beat Sonic Forces with only one hand? I mean, vaguely speaking, yeah, it is. I mean, look, if Sakurai can 1v1 himself in Smash Bros, then no doubt something as simple as Sonic Forces can be done like that. Also, I, I don't want this to be a press boost to win challenge, so uh, let's give the moveset a little more flexibility. Uh, let's, let's change the title. How many levels in Sonic Forces can be completed without the analog stick? The goal, beat as many levels without the easiest source of movement. Although this one is going to be a lot more chill than the other challenges. It's not really, can we beat the game like this from a brand new save file? I, I mean, it's not going to make a difference if we do anyway. Uh, the only collectibles that can change the gameplay are the Wisp Bonds, and we can find the ones we need by selecting a rental avatar. Bet you forgot those were a thing. I, I forgot those were a thing while I started the challenge. This is more of a test just to see how infamously automatic, handholdy, and linear Forces is. I'll be using the Xbox One version, and as usual, it's on the actual hardware. So, let us begin with the first level, Lost Valley. For this one, we get to play as Sonic. Now, despite our lack of immediate movement, we do still have a couple of alternate forms for movement. B is for crouching, sliding downhill, and stomping. He has his double jump from colors, which turns into the homing attack when he's near an enemy. The shoulder buttons are for quick stepping. Oh yeah, Mom is, um, making deviled eggs. Uh, I don't know if y'all could hear that. <laughs> the shoulder buttons are for quick stepping. That'll be handy for repositioning ourselves. And in this game, X is strictly designated for boosting. If we don't have any juice in our gauge, nothing happens. Even when pressing it in the air without anything, it doesn't give us a little air dash like in the other boost games. In other words, Sonic really doesn't have a reliable way to move forwards unless he's able to boost. And pretty much every stage starts us with an empty tank of gas. Now, unless we start in a 2D section, it's not an automatic loss. Forces does have some stupid jank that can help us out. For instance, if part of Sonic's body is standing on a slightly elevated surface, like right here, and we press B, he will, for whatever reason, perform a slide. This will skew us in a different direction, and we can steadily make our way downtown with the quick steps. Those boost pads right here do look helpful, but all they'll do is reset our position and get us stuck. Unless they launch us into something that can fill up the boost gauge, it's best to avoid them. Sometimes we just gotta take it slow and steady. There's one more factor to this quick step strategy, that being, how steep are we climbing? You can see right here Sonic is kinda struggling going uphill, and eventually it gets to the point where he can't go any higher. Repositioning him does help out a bunch, but sometimes we just need to find a way to get our character to be facing the left or right wall. The good news is we can do a bit of finagling in the beginning strip. It takes a little while, but eventually we get it just right. With Sonic facing the wall, we can efficiently make it up the slope. Keep doing that until the game automatically pulls us into the ramp. Once we land, press B to slide into the wisp, then we can easily boost through the rest and reach the goal. Good job, team! It took us over five minutes to get through the first level. One world domination text later, we get to create our very own original character. Each of the seven species has their own special ability, and... Honestly, they they all seem pretty situational at best. I, I feel like the bird's double jump would be the least awful, so um... In that case, say hello to Constantine, everybody. One thing that will help us when playing the avatars are the Wisp Bonds. They're weapons designed after some of the Wisps. We're mainly going to be using Drill, it's the only one that can move us forwards. Although I can see Lightning coming in handy for taking out hordes of enemies. 
Unfortunately, if we were using a brand new save file, the resistance starts new recruits with burst. Uh, fortunately, if we were doing it that way, we could always phone a friend. Pressing X before an avatar level allows us to use one of the rental avatars. Hopefully, we can find one with drill. Aha, you're doing the dirty work. The first avatar level is Spaceport, so let's quickly go over their moveset. It's very similar to Sonic's. The same homing attack, the same stomp and slide, the same quick step. But instead of boosting with X, we get to use our weapon with the right trigger. And pressing Y after collecting a Wisp capsule grants us an extra ability for a short period. Again, Drill is going to be our main mode of transportation. Depending on how much we mash, we can perform a small charge, a medium charge, or a massive charge. Combining that with our quick step will make the 3D sections much easier for us. And, um... Y yeah, we can kind of just go crazy with this level. I mean, watch this. We schmoovin' everybody! There's a grind section at the end, and it must be known that we can switch rails by hitting the bumpers. So yeah, surprisingly, not too bad. We got this one in the bag. Why can't we use the wisp on? Oh, I see, the icon is dimmed. So, there are just moments where they can't be used. Come on, we're literally right in front of the exit, man. What to do? What to do? Hold up. That looks slightly elevated. Can we do that slide trick here? Yeah, perfect. Now we can shimmy our way into the goal and move on to the next level. Ghost Town. Witch Star's Classic Sonic. Hey, it's your friendly neighborhood post-production mod here. Uh, I, I hate to spoil it for everybody, but literally none of Classic Sonic stages are possible. Uh, most of them stonewall us within the first 30 seconds, whether it be because of incredibly stiff platforming or we can't turn around to face the opposite direction. The only one where we can make any progress in is Ghost Town, and right at the very end, both of the routes we can take end up getting us stuck on a spring. There's no way to get unstuck without the analog stick. Just to not waste any time with them, we can just skip over them, okay? Okay, moving on. Prison Hall. For this one, we need to use two avatars. One of them holds drill, while the other has lightning. The beginning 3D strip is very manageable, nothing to really talk about. The following 2D section has a few things to look out for. After the checkpoint, we come across a lone super ring. Inch up towards it, and once it's been collected, two robots will appear behind us. Defeating them reveals a pulley. There is actually a way to turn around, but trust me, it'd be a lot easier to use our handy dandy lightning wisp on. Lightning is the best for attacking, because its range is absolutely ridiculous. Look at how far that reached. Follow the path the pulley takes us until we get to the second pulley. We want to stand on this platform where the whisk capsule is on. Taking the lower route gets us stuck on a spring pole. When we land on it, jump, quickly charge up the drill, then release it to soar above the obstacles. One last hook shot drifts us into the last checkpoint, which is followed by an easy quick step se uh, Of course, it doesn't automatically take us to the booster, and of course, we can't even use the drill here. <laughs> There's always that slide trick, uh, let me just find a place to... Nope, we can't even execute it here. Hmm. How can we get out of this predicament? <gasps> That's right! Almost every Wispawn will have a number of side effects to them. In normal gameplay, these are just little bonuses, but for this specific instance, they can be game changers. There's one that can extend our sliding distance. Yeah, I think that would work best here. Because of how Prison Hall is formatted, we're gonna have to use a drill with that slide ability. So now, whenever the game pulls us in for the final section, hold B as soon as possible to retain some of our momentum for when we slide. If our timing was good enough, we will slip into the final section where the game will automatically make us run down this hallway and eventually into the goal. I gotta say, the boss battle with Zabok was actually kinda fun. There's a weird bit of strategy to it. The only ways we can move around are by sidestepping and using the homing attack. 
We can make our limited movement a little more flexible by locking onto a robot from an angle. When we land on the ground, Sonic should be skewed. This opens up a larger amount of area we can sidestep in, with also a potential to grab some rings. We get to do that a bunch of times during this fight. The Death Queen has a long-lasting laser. Jump right before it comes out, then stall a little longer with a belated double jump. We will have to take one hit, but doing it a second time will put us in the clear. Another important thing to be aware of is Sonic's position relative to the boss before they slam down. We want to be in the middle when this happens, because when we land back on the ground, we don't want to be near the edge. Sometimes the outer ring will collapse, so it's best to stay clear of that. And during the last two phases where they rush towards us, we can easily homing attack out of the way. Even if we take damage, there will be plenty of golden goodies to devour. Yeah, it might be crazy, but I can unironically recommend fighting Zavok this way. With nobody guarding the exit, we make our great escape in Egg Gate. Bruh. That, that was a lie. We're still in jail. Arsenal Pyramid is one of the handful of levels where we get to play as Sonic and the Avatar at the same time. Since we could boost as Sonic to move forwards, we could get creative with the kind of wisp on we can use. For this one, I equipped the Avatar with Lightning. Equipped it. Equipped it? I equipped today. I equipped yesterday. Okay, okay, the ED was throwing me off really hard. I got called out for that by a couple of people in um, the Black Knight Challenge video. I, uh, <laughs> apparently I've been mispronouncing that word my whole life. <sighs> Anywho, <laughs> pick lightning. Everything up to the double boost is effortless. We will get hit once from the skydiving portion, and I'd say it'd be quite the achievement to not collect any rings up to this point. Once we land, we have to boost into the lightning capsule. Then very quickly, press and hold Y to use the light speed dash on the trail of rings. Repeat that for multiple sequences, then when the time comes, hold the boost button to win. Luminous Forest is the main reason why I'm even making this video. If you want to watch the original video made by Super Go Go Man, where he beats this level with only one hand, there is a link in the description that will take you directly to it. Up next, we have our second boss battle with our first boss battle against Infinite. I am not over-exaggerating when I say this. It was like fighting him normally. Oh my goodness. Classic Sonic has a Green Hill level, so we can skip over it. Boof song! It is called Motionless and Obedient. The following Eggman fight doesn't fare any better. Our normal jump doesn't reach the Eggmobile. Also, spin dashing and drop dashing locks us in a corner. There's no way to reach him. Park Avenue is up next, and believe it or not, Super Go Go Man also beat this one with one hand as well. I'll link that one in the description too. To give this level some credit, it is more interactive than Luminous Forest because it's an avatar stage and we have to figure out when and how to use the Drill Wisp. Up next, we have Aqua Road. For this avatar level, equip Drill. The very first thing we see is a fork in the road. We will naturally go down the left path if we don't sidestep to the right. If we repeatedly mash RT, we can do this really funny glitch where we launch ourselves out of the tunnel. Doing this actually skips over the trigger that summons the bad mix. While this does sound handy since they can no longer bump us off the edge, we, we sometimes need to bump into them to stay in the water slide. Nothing funny can happen when we take the path on the right, so let's go down that way. The only thing we can do when we land on the water slide is move with the analog stick. So, um, yeah, for this level, we kind of just put our fate into the hands of the game. <laughs> uh, the good news is that the robot's positions are usually different every time, so all we have to do is hope the stars align for both sliding sections. And eventually, they do indeed align. The beginning strip of Sunset Heights is a long stretch of nothingness. If we sidestep, we can see that the sidewalk is slightly elevated. This would be perfect to perform that sliding trick, but unfortunately, Sonic cannot be positioned in a way where he can perform it. No need to fret, all hope is not lost. 
Sonic is already placed in a way where sidestepping along the right wall will move us forwards. It is not much, but given time, we will find something that will fill up the boost gauge. In fact, uh, let me show you just how long it takes. <laughs> He's the leader of the bunch! He's finally back to kick some to his coconut gun! Can fire and spurt! If he shoots it up, it's gonna hurt! Hold it. Why aren't we moving? Really? <sighs> Man. In Capital City, we will need two avatars, one with Drill and one with Lightning. However, one of them is going to need that sliding ability from earlier. Not far into the level, Infinite will use his hallucinations to send us down a different route with lasers. For some reason, we are skewed to the right, um, it's no problem, we can make this work. When the lasers are recharging, tap RT, then quick step twice to get back in the middle. Repeat this sequence until we're in range to use the, uh, grapple hook thing, I don't know what we call it. <laughs> Next is a 2D section. Keep inching up with the drill until we're underneath this lightning wisp. Swap from the Drill user to the Lightning user, collect the Lightning Wisp, then switch back to the Drill. We'd want to save our Lightning ability for when we get to the corner. Right before the Trail of Rings, switch avatars, and jump so Infinite can change gravity again. We should be facing the wall, but holding Y will have us perform the light speed dash. Because of how the rings are formatted, it will flip our line of direction, allowing us to proceed onwards. The next thing to note are these three lines of boosters. Whoever has the extra sliding ability needs to be at the front of the party. There's another moment where we're not allowed to use our wisp on when we stop running. After the second turnabout, hold B. Once we slide out of the building, drill jump over the laser boxes, and very soon we will find the goal. Wait, huh? Do y'all, do y'all hear something? Oh, 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 look who wants a rematch. Here's a helpful tidbit I have yet to mention. Specific kinds of wispawns will grant us invincibility frames when they are being used. These include cube, drill, and lightning. Lightning is the most well-known abuser of this. As you can see by the footage, you can see that if we mash quick enough, we can phase through everything. The problem, my mashing sucks, and Constantine ends up dying within the first minute. So let's change to drill. At the very beginning, wait for Infinite to fly closer. Double jump, then charge up for an attack. If we're quick enough, we can take off a hefty chunk of his health. Now we'll be stuck facing the wall, but fear not, we have an ace up our sleeve. Using Drill makes us invulnerable, we just went over that. However, Drill is a special case. I I'm surprised I've never heard anyone mention this, but... Simply charging the attack makes us untouchable. You're seeing what I'm seeing, right? The cannonballs are hitting us, but we're not taking any damage. We can do this the entire time for guaranteed safety. The only time we want to let go of RT is when the Jackal is about to charge into us. Before he gets near us, double jump, quickly mash RT, then, right before touching him, release it. If we timed it perfectly, he should be taking a hit before we start tripping again. So, with all this in mind, Infinite should be taking his second L. Redgate Bridge is the next teamwork level. For some reason, when the level loads, the avatar is facing the opposite way. Um, we can easily fix that. Jumping will have him look in the line of direction. All we need to do is drill while airborne to carry on as normal. That is the only thing worth mentioning, the following fight with Metal Sonic was nothing to worry about. Guardian Rock was unbelievably brain dead, oh my goodness! Network Terminal was exceedingly simple at first, but everything quickly goes downhill once we enter the second dimension. We can't turn around to look at those robots. Classic Sonic's Death Egg level just isn't happening. So instead, look at this neat thing I found! I did that by only jumping. Metropolitan Highway.
Ah uh, yes, the infamous Null Space. For this tag team level, the Avatar is going to need lightning. After the game automatically runs us through the first 25 seconds, we find our first checkpoint. Sidestep once to the left as Sonic, then click RT to switch to the Avatar. They should be facing the side at this point, so we will be able to shimmy into the boosters. The rest of the level is nothing but grinding and enemy hordes. Only the second group of robots is mandatory to defeat. Keep whipping until all the enemies are defeated. Sonic will be facing the side, so to have him face the pulley, jump, then boost. Oops, we accidentally went a little too far. Position the OC underneath the pulley, switch, then jump. The rest of the level is more or less the same. There's a wall jumping section after the first checkpoint of Imperial Tower. We need to be holding the analog stick into the wall in order to execute it. Sadly, there is no alternative. Well, for this specific instance, there's no alternative. We can use the drill's Y button ability to climb up the wall. The problem is that after the checkpoint, there is no drill capsule to collect. Even after experimenting with various Wispawn combinations, none of them yielded any results. It's a shame, I was, I was actually getting excited to finally use a different weapon. Ah well. So at the very beginning of Mortar Canyon, we use a set of boost pads, but they don't take us very far. I thought, okay, we can slide to go a little further, and while it does get us closer to the slope, it's still not enough. Alright, what are some different ways to move on? I tried out that sliding trick, but the entire floor was flat, and then I sidestepped along the wall, but our position remained unchanged. But, that single gear in my head started turning, and it gave me... a, a really stupid idea. While Sonic is still running from the first dash panel, we should... quick step. I mean... I, I, there's no harm in trying that. Oh, okay, okay. Th thank you, game. <laughs> the rest is an open downward slope. Uh, even if for some reason we stop, we could just sidestep and slide. So no real trouble. Wow, looks like somebody wants another rematch. <laughs> uh, wait, uh, mm, oh. Final Judgment is like consuming a scoop of ice cream. My personal favorites are cookie dough, cookies and cream, and birthday cake. I just like the ones that are, like, inherently the worst for you. <laughs> and finally, the final battle against the final boss, the Death Egg Robot. Classic Sonic is up first, and his section is embarrassingly easy. Jump over the lasers, spin dash into the side, then play volleyball until we pass the baton to the avatar. Well, I mean, avatars. Yeah, I didn't know we were able to use rentals for this one either. You can, um, probably guess what kind of heat they will both be packing. The whippersnapper will be doing most of the work. Once the robot slams its arm down, use the homing attack to get close, then start wailing away. Once it's at a third of its health, it will start to destroy the floor. Obviously, this is where we switch to Drill to move out of the way, but before we tag him in, we need to be facing a different direction. While the arm is still down, we can quick step and homing attack to change which way we're facing. Let's move over and lock onto the left side. Then shuffle over a tiny bit away, make sure it's still in range of whipping. When it flinches, start sidestepping towards the back. The angle we set ourselves should be sharp enough to evade the wave of destruction. After that, it will shoot three sets of lasers that will also destroy the terrain. Switch over to Drill, and once it starts coming, charge and release a medium-powered Drill Charge. Do this for all three passes. Then switch back to Lightning, scoot close to where the arm would be placed, and start lashing out until we can move into the final phase. It was so straightforward that I beat it on my first try. Wow. And with that, we're done with the main campaign, but the challenge isn't over just yet. There's still six secret stages, seven extra stages, and three stages from the episode Shadow DLC. The first 13 are just short filler levels, so we can just blaze through most of them. 
but before we start, I need to show off a little trick that I accidentally found that will definitely help us out with the avatar stages. We need to be close to a wall and have drill equipped. If we press RT, the drill will push us back. Now let's do that again, but this time, the moment we drill, press A. Because we jump just as we were moving in the opposite direction, the avatar will turn around. We can get right next to the wall by drilling, then pressing B to slide up next to it. One last thing to note is that drilling in the air will push us farther than if we were on the ground. Only reason why I haven't mentioned any of this yet is because there was never really a time we had to do this. Now, on to the bonus stages. Fire Cannon 1. After the first checkpoint, that jumping turnaround trick can easily be performed so we can face the correct way and move on. Oh yeah, we're gonna be using that a lot. Climbing with these horizontal flames following the second checkpoint takes some practice. We need to make sure we're close enough to the wall in order to turn around and proceed all while avoiding the fire. It takes a lot of precision and a lot of patience to successfully climb, but once we overcome that part, the rest is a cakewalk. Vanish Panel 1, it is a 2D level that stars Sonic. Bomb Block 1, it is a 2D level that stars Sonic. Plasma Cannon 1, this level has another one of those climbing sections. With enough time and patience, we can get past it and find the goal. Laser Cannon 1, it is a 2D level that stars Sonic. Reverse Block 1, for this one we need two avatars with the usual combo. Even with the level's gimmick, it's still very easy to drill across. Until we arrive in this room, all of the enemies need to be destroyed before we can continue. Obviously, we're going to switch to- Oh, sh sh Jesus, man! I- I keep forgetting how huge this thing is! <laughs> okay, okay, um, anyway. A few of them managed to get off scot-free, so let's move towards the remaining survivors. Both of the corners have springs. It's very difficult to turn around when it's hogging up so much space. Instead, bounce on the spring, drill into the wall, press B to destroy the yellow blocks, then quickly drill again to land in the area of the block before it respawns. Hopefully, we can place ourselves in a way where we can face the left wall. Once we can successfully do that, not much else can be said after that. Flying Pod, it is a 2D level that stars Sonic. Bomb Block 2, we get cut off right at the very end. I tried this one for over an hour, and it's just not possible. During the final section, we have to land on this specific block without destroying it, so it can give us the height we need to reach the goal. I tested it out, and even when we land at the very edge of the Bomb Block, it still gets destroyed. Sad, sad day. Laser Cannon 2. This part in the middle gave a little trouble. Uh, the laser is spinning quickly, so we must swiftly climb the right platforms before we get sizzled. The rest is a bunch of trial and error. Reverse Block 2. It features Ogilvy Maurice the Hedgehog. Vanish Panel 2. Near the end, we have to make these jumps by turning around. However, the panels are too far away from the wall. I even tried to launch us from the slope, but the fourth block is obstructing the way. Sadly, this one is also undoable. Fire Cannon 2, it is a 2D level that- I mean, I get it! And Plasma Cannon 2, I could repeat the same line, but it's already too repetitive. You know, all of these are 2D, I'm surprised Classic Sonic wasn't in any of these. And now, the three levels from Episode Shadow. Enemy territory is just a rehash of Sunset Heights. Although this time, there is a boost panel much closer to us. So like before, we can slowly and steadily make our way over. Once we interact with it, quick step to maintain our speed so we can easily collect the wisp. From here, we can continue as normal until we can't turn around in this 2D section. Eggman's facility is just like Aqua Road. We let the game play itself and hope for the best. Once we get to the second water slide, we're put into a situation where Shadow can't escape death. This spiky ball will always be in the middle and we cannot alter where we land. For the longest time, I thought this one was also impossible, but out of nowhere, a feature that I previously forgot about crept from the corners of my mind. We can toggle the game's difficulty. 
I've been doing this entire thing on hard, so let's change it to normal. From my knowledge, the main difference between the two is how many rings we lose when we get hit. In hard mode, all of our rings get thrown away, while in normal, we only drop 20. Luckily, Shadow only hits the ball twice, so we need to be holding more than 20 rings when we reach it. Good news is there's a fair amount to find on the road leading to it, but the checkpoint right before that only gives us 20. We have to do everything in one go, and... I, I, I was just having the worst luck with the motorbug placements, man. It took over two hours to do it perfectly, oh my gosh. And last but not least, Virtual Reality. It is a 2D level that stars Shadow. Hardy har har. Now that we've finally played all the stages, let's look at the results. Out of the 30 levels from the story mode, 17 can be completed without the analog stick. From the 13 bonus stages, only 4 can be completed. And in the 3 levels from Episode Shadow, 1 can be completed. Adding all the levels together, we get a score of 22 out of 46. Which means... 48% of Sonic Forces can be completed without the analog stick. With how not good the level design is, I wholeheartedly expected that number to be way higher, like at least 75%. Oh well, it was still a fun run. Hey, thanks for sticking around this long. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope your day is going magnificently. Hello, and welcome to the outro. So, I have some good news, some bad news, some great news, and some terrible news. The terrible news, I will not be making a neat things video for Sonic Forces. How could you do this mod? Um, to bluntly put it, I straight up could not find a lot of stuff for a Sonic Forces neat things video. In fact, it would have been like, two minutes long, if I'm not mistaken. So what I did was I just put all the things that I found and then I implemented them into into the challenge video. I feel like some of those were uh, pretty obvious of uh, what was a, uh, you know, a neat thing that could have appeared in the neat things video. The good news is that Maud has just finished college about a month ago and he just got a job. Woohoo! Work at a little machine shop. The bad news is that the job is taking a lot of time out of my hand, so, you know, the upload schedule and the whole process of me making videos is going to be a lot slower than what it usually, than what it already is. <laughs> Which I sincerely apologize for, but I'd rather have quality over quantity. I'd rather take my time with my videos so they're not rushed out. I try not to do that, at least. The great news is that I just figured out how to emulate on my laptop, which means I can uh, get decent footage for Game Boy Advance, or Game Boy, DS, all those games, which would be really cool. I could actually, I could actually make a video for Sonic Battle, which is actually on my uh, to-do list, believe it or not. Actually, the uh, first video I'll be making on the GBA is uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, believe it or not. I just really want to talk about it for some reason. Mm, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all I got. By the time this comes out, I'm assuming it will be, like, in late June. So I hope everyone has a very good summer.